Uh, good evening again. Uh, once more, uh, you are on the webinar today with us, Artushenko and Partners, uh, November 10th. Uh, we will uh, have uh, some discussions in English uh, in respect of the FIRIC and the PC construction in Kazakhstan. Uh, it is not a pure webinar as a standard, let's say. We have made it as a Q&A session uh, for international contractors. And the questions was received uh, in advance uh, during the registration. Uh, this record will be available later on uh, via uh, YouTube channel uh, and uh, via our educational panel, uh, uh, educational <coughs> platform, I'm sorry, where we uh, uh, making the seminars and uh, courses uh, in respect of the FIRIC and EPC contracts application in Kazakhstan in different uh, contexts. Uh, Goran, Karen, uh, can you please put on the cameras? Uh, I'm going to present our speakers today. Um, myself, uh, my name is Andrei Artushenko. I'm a managing partner of the Artushenko & Partners boutique law firm located in Kazakhstan, in Almaty. I'm a construction uh, and arbitrator construction lawyer and uh, arbitrator with the 22 years of experience in Kazakhstan and post-Soviet Union countries with uh, construction contracts and construction arbitration. I'm the member of the team developing subcontracts for FIRIC. Um, who's next? Uh, Goran. Goran is here with us. Uh, Goran is a project director at the Ludwig Pfeiffer uh, company. He's experienced engineer with the uh, infrastructure construction contract since 1998. More than 10 years of experience with FIRIC contracts, uh, yellow, red, pink book, books, financed by ADV, EBRD uh, in, um, uh, in markets of Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Georgia, Turkey, Montenegro, Tajikistan. And Karen Rustamian is our Artushenko and Partners boutique law firm expert. Uh, he's from Armenia, he's contract manager, uh, tendering specialist, practicing lawyer in construction and management under FIDI contracts with experiences from 1995, experienced uh, in uh, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Georgia, Russia, and other countries. Uh, we will try to cover all questions today, um, uh, considering that uh, they are related to Kazakhstani projects and uh, Kazakhstani practice. Uh, all speakers today uh, do have experience working in Kazakhstan, and um, we will uh, once again, colleagues. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the chat. If it is relevant, uh, we will uh, we will name them, uh, and if there are new questions, we will uh, try to answer in the end uh, if there will be available time because we have only ninety minutes for this webinar. Uh, okay, uh, should this, uh, give, me, give me just a second, I'm, I'm sorry, this, yes, uh, first question, first question, it's my question, yeah, uh, I should answer, uh, can uh, I, uh, actually, I just combined several questions in one, because there are a lot of, uh, there was a lot of similar questions, uh, that is why it is accumulated in this one, can FIDIC be used in the local projects in Kazakhstan, how, can you realistically apply FIDIC conditions when you are operating in the environment of the KZ Kazakhstani civil code legislation and so on? The, um, uh, uh, such questions. Yes, of course, it is possible. And we have such practice uh, in Kazakhstan uh, using FIDIC contracts. How? Uh, you will need to adopt the contract to the local legislation. It is strictly written in the uh, FIDIC guide. Uh, in FIRI guidance, uh, you need to adopt it to the project, to the situation, to the construction, and to the local legislation. The volume of adaptation is very much depends on the project, uh, on the project, uh, different uh, kind of questions. So for example, uh, financing part, who will finance, finance it? Uh, what kind of procurement is uh, should be applied? If it's a state procurement, Samruk Kazana, it's different, of course. The most of the projects in Kazakhstan with the FIRIC are financed by EBRD, ADB, and other uh, international banks. Um, there are a huge amount of uh, projects built under the, uh, using the FIRIC, FIRIC platform. 
I hope I answered the question. Uh, let's go next. Uh, differences between local and foreign English law. Are there any conflicts very closes with local law? Uh, I will start and my colleagues will uh, help me uh, maybe in, in the end to, to finalize. If, if it is shortly, uh, um, of course, there, there are a lot of differences for sure. Uh, it is almost uh, impossible to uh, to comply in some points with the FIRIC golden rules if there are few some of Kazana procurement rules should be applied, for example. But again, um, it depends on the uh, on the arbitration clause, of course. But major conflicts with the responsibility, for example, approach with the Kazakhstani law, it is liquidated damages, indemnities. There is design development issues plus uh, specific with the state expertise, then uh, making changes in this design. It is there are a lot of differences, and usually it is not changing the contract but adding the contract in our practice. Commissioning issues, uh, different approach, uh, defects in warranty in or in GMP period, uh, but. Uh, Need to put in uh, in line that um, it is very much depending on the arbitration clause. From my point of view, from our experience, uh, if it is state courts, then you will have to adopt it more, uh, and uh, there are less critic uh, left in in the contract. Again, depending on the applicable rules, applicable common <clears throat> procurement rules. If it is arbitration strictly written in the contract, uh, then there are more freedom for parties, and there are no need to um, uh, to close, let's say, every hole, uh, everything to change everything. Uh, arbitration allows us to not change a lot uh, the contract terms. Uh, if my colleagues can add something, uh, Goran, Karen, please. Yes, Karen. Do you hear me? Uh, once again, because I, uh, yes, no, no. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, asking the question about conflicting FIDIC laws with local laws. So, I as uh, uh, as work, I, I work in uh, different countries, almost in five or six countries, and I would say that the most uh, important uh, issue asking about conflicting FIDIC clauses with local law is those which are conflicting the FIDIC golden principles. One of the uh, and uh, the uh, mainly about. Uh, Dispute Avoidance Board and Arbitration. So uh, for answering this question, whether local laws conflicting with FIDIC, the first two should be whether the local laws conflicting with extrajudicial uh, dispute resolution, as it is the DAEB, and uh, accept, uh, acceptance and recognition of arbitral awards taken abroad. So these are the main. All other issues regarding the commissioning or handover of the works or payment method, other things, these are just small details which are avoidable. So FIDIC would not work in your country country unless you may provide uh, the parties with uh, DAB or unless you may, uh, uh, your country uh, accepts or not the arbitration uh, awards taken abroad. Yes, but uh, again, we are talking about Kazakhstan. Uh, for Kazakhstan, yeah, yeah, we are, we are talking uh, about not a lot of problems. It is possible to implement. Yeah, the... I understand. So I just uh, saying the uh, difference. Uh, the main thing is asking about these two answers, whether they are conflicting or not. Other things, of course, uh, yes, in any country there are some conflicts, and they, but they are avoidable. They could be somehow be provided under the uh, particular conditions of contract changing something or, or adopting something. But these two things, uh, adopting, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, accepting arbitral awards and providing extrajudicial 
conf uh, conflict resolution is the main things. Thank you. Okay, uh, if you don't mind, we'll go forward with the third question. Um, what are the major conflict conflicting conditions of Tirik Yellow Book, second edition, and the Republic of Kazakhstan laws that may lead to dispute between the employer and contractor? How such conflicts can be mitigated by the employer side and contractor side? Goran, please. Oh, give me a second. Sorry. Oh, good. Hello, everybody. So, from, from our experience, the main major conflict between uh, Yellow Book and the Kazakhstan law are laying in the fact that uh, during tender procedure, uh, employer is obliged to provide full detailed design for the approval to the authorities before starting the tender procedure. And this is uh, contradictory to the Yellow Fedic book uh, basics because the uh, Yellow Fedic book requires or pro uh, provides that the uh, contractor is one who is doing design. And there comes to the first uh, contradiction and conflict a bit because uh, the employer is usually making design before publishing tender having the, uh, uh, pub the state expertise in hands and then requesting that works will be done in accordance with the yellow feeding book. This is practical uh, and uh, very common problem where contractors are trying to, to, to resolve this and to start with the oven design and uh, because of the shortage of the time and uh, usually such uh, contracts are uh, published and uh, announced in short time, short period of time. And uh, due to the specific Kazakh regulation about the producing of design and uh, about the uh, pa passing uh, through uh, state expertise, this is not possible to, to change and to replace the design what is already in hands. And the uh, outcome of this is that uh, practically uh, contractor is blind when he starts to, de to deliver his proposal, price proposal for this for the tender. So he is bidding with the, with the most, uh, the, with the minimum price for the tender. At the same time, the employer is expecting to get what he designed. And there is a, there is, there is a conflict. Second is that uh, Kazakh law is the one who is, uh, the construction law of the Kazakhstan requires detail uh, cost breakdown of the of the uh, de delivered works of the executed works which obviously if we are now coming to back to the employer's design is very detailed and very uh, many items must be proved and must be calculated and uh, this also brings the another view from the conflict of the Yellow Fedic book and, uh, and design because Yellow Fedic book delivers a uh, lump sum price. So contractor bids for the lump sum, which must be paid at the end. And if he now requires to employ uh, specific stuff, which will calculate and measure and deliver quantities which are executed on the site, it increases in, in, enormously increases his costs on the site. So these are these two are the major problems. Employer doesn't uh, recognize usually doesn't recognize that yellow fedic book is is a lump sum uh, price, price book. The payment must be done in completely another way than Kazakh law provides. Of course, as uh, Karen told, this is uh, easy to avoid and to to accept in the beginning of the tender procedure, and uh, this can be mitigated. Uh, only by by careful preparation of the tender documents, by by, uh, yeah. by, uh, by providing full information in advance to the contractors, so all contractors will be aware of the same conditions or, or on the conditions on which basis the contract will be executed. This is from me now. The topic is very wide, so we can discuss long. Uh, yes, I will just add a couple of things uh, in respect of the very very much too much detailed design in Kazakhstan 
the requirements are still in force from Soviet Union, it is Hadek. Uh, but uh, in respect of the uh, of the position of the Goran, uh, which you said in the beginning that uh, during the Yellow Book tender, uh, there are some problems with the documentation and so on, uh, especially with the design when the contractor should design. But uh, again, actually, there are several ways in Kazakhstani law how to avoid it. I mean, for the employer. There are several ways and they, they are using it when and how, depending on the experience of the uh, employer. If it is well experienced and if it is, there is no, let's say, clear understanding what for yellow book is, then there is a good documentation. Uh, but it's not always the case, unfortunately. Uh, it's not only in Kazakhstan, but the, in any country where the uh, FIDIC is applies. Because employers are not always very good knows uh, the possibilities of local laws, the combining with the FIDIC and so on and so on. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 excuse me, I see a few questions in, in this regard. So Mr. Al Alfonso didn't hear well, I think Andre gave explanation. So there are possibilities. Do you hear me now well? Andre, do you hear me? Uh, I hear you well. Uh, Okay. Uh, Alnisa, uh, uh, writing that means that we cannot use yellow book because goes experience. No, you can use yellow book. It depends on the employer's uh, experience, uh, and not only experience, but the but the structure of the project. If it is financed by EBRD, then it allows you to avoid a lot of local rules. Then it is possible to do it as it should be should be done in the ferry contracts. But again, depending on the experience of the uh, employee, if he know how to do it, how to structure the, the relations with the EBRD, how to um, prepare the documentation, because the uh, the main headache, uh, not in only in Kazakhstan but uh, everywhere, is not with the translation or with the uh, local um, uh, local frames in legislation, but with the employer requirements, with the employer uh, professionalism and uh, the documentation which prepare preparing during the tender, usually it is a lack of time to do. It. Uh, Andre, I would mm -hmm. I would like to add about this question from Alcina. So, in my opinion, the careful selection of the FIDIC book or FIDIC type contract or FIDIC contract type, in proper way. Uh, is the main task for the employer and for the consultant and engineer who are advising the employer. So when whenever the yellow FIDIC book is used, it is considered that it is designed by contractor. Whenever a design is done by the employer, then it is considered as a red FIDIC book or some another type of the book, which is considerably useful, green, green type of the, of the book or emerald, what is the 2017 edition. So well, thank careful you. selection, careful selection of the of the contract type is the the main task for the employer. Yeah, it's uh, it's a separate question, of course. Uh, question number four: For which category of construction are EPC fiddy contract used? Karen, uh, if it's possible to make it short. Okay. So Goran ju uh, just. A couple of seconds ago, said that the FIDIC, the type of FIDIC book should be uh, chosen very carefully. So this question is about this: for which category of construction EPC FIDIC contracts is to be used? So uh, let us not speak about just EPC contract. I will talk about also red and the yellow. So red uh, is taken when the employer has a detailed design on his hands and he wants the construction to be completed and this detailed design so this is for the red for yellow yellow uh, is for the um, simple construction i would say not uh, but for which the, the employer has no his own design and he wants the design to be developed by the contractor so uh, I had in my practice yellow book used for buildings, for bridge, and also for buildings. 
And now for EPC. EPC contracts are to be, uh, they have to be used for the uh, cases when the employer first has no the design, but has idea what he wants to get. It is the same as for the yellow book, but for under, uh, under EPC contract, uh, the uh, the projects uh, uh, the EPC contract should be chosen for the projects for which the results of the works should be a production mean. It is an it could be an electric power station. It could be mine. It could be plant having its some uh, performance indicator. So. The, uh, for the EPC contract, employer has in his mind, in his idea, some performance indicators, what the future object should perform and at what capacity, at what cost. And this is the main idea of EPC contracts. So employer has, has no design, has, uh, has but idea, but with uh, uh, performance uh indicators so employer says for well, i would just bring a, a couple of examples for uh silver book uh, i had in my practice it was a mining a mine it was a metal power plant a metal plant a metal steel production and it was uh, electric power plant. So these are the uh, objects which should work and should bring money to the employer. And these are not just simple building. This is not just a simple brick. It is a production mean. And EPC contracts goes under for, goes for this uh, type of uh, projects. First, the uh, uh, it's it, the idea of EPC contract is that the employer has no Mm, idea how to prepare to make this uh, object, how to construct, how to what to buy for it to do to work. But it has an idea of uh, of performance indicators. It says, "I want power plant with this type of output, uh, with this level of output, with this level of uh, costs, and that, that's it." This is the EPC context to be used for. I guess I could uh, I answer the question. Do you have any additional questions regarding this? Thank you. Uh, I do not have any questions. Goran, can you add something? Yes, there is a certain difference between yellow and silver or EPC book, because the silver book is considered as an EPC book in FIDIC. Uh, the main uh, characteristic of the EPC contract is that there is no, the administration of the contract is given to the employer. So there is no engineer under the EPC books. So contractor and the employer are running the contract together. However, this doesn't mean that uh, employer is putting his nose all the time in the, in the con construction process. It just means that uh, he is uh, following uh, deliveries, he is approving deliveries, and uh, in EPC contract, uh, employer is pretty much sure about the price and about the scheduling of the other works. So the risk allocation is mostly allocated to the contractor side. In yellow feeding book, the risk allocation is balanced between parties. So for certain uh, works, uh, for certain risks, employer takes uh, his own responsibility. And EPC contracts are not applicable for, for example, for the underground works or for the works where, where a contractor doesn't have sufficient time to analyze the conditions for the work in advance before starting or, be, before, or during the bidding process. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Uh, the next question. Uh, uh, Please make an introduction of the contract interpretation principles according to the Kazakhstan laws and how to interpret and understand the meaning of good engineering practices under the Kazakh contract practice and cases. 
Could you say there are not such, such conception in Kazakhstan legislation? Uh, there, there, there is no local interpretation even for, for this thing, let's say. Uh, <clears throat> on my practice, uh, if, if uh, engineer and employer both understands uh, what does it mean, not only good engineering practice, but uh, the professional contractor should be aware, for example, what does it mean. And so if employer and the engineer understands it in the beginning, uh, then uh, I believe there will be no problem. Uh, because it, it will be there will be a need of the contractor to uh, to follow uh, what will say engineer let's say for employer. But if there is some misunderstandings, uh, and if there is some misunderstandings raised by the contractor during the tendering stage, then of course it should be uh, it, it should be or added or corrected somehow because of the local uh, specific let's say and. Also, it depends on the arbitration clause again. If it is Kazakhstani courts, local Kazakhstani state courts, it is one situation. If it is arbitration, it's different situation at all. Uh, sometimes uh, in, in, in our practice, we change the good engineering practice to the country legislation, just in accordance with the country legislation sometimes. But uh, it's not always applicable for some, uh, Technological projects, it's not always uh, possible to do it like this. In some uh, in some cases, we add these phrases, good engineering practice, with the uh, with the words based on the employer's requirements. For example, uh, again, if it is uh, if it is applicable, but in, in our case, it was applicable. Uh, maybe have something to add, colleagues. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, we have some short advertising out. Uh, colleagues, we are going to make uh, an English uh, a seminar in English language in December this year. Uh, it will be about FIDIC and NPC construction contracts in Kazakhstan. It is seven hour seminar, uh, offline seminar in Almaty. Main issues that will be covered by me because I will be the speaker. Uh, it is the come uh, it, it, it is the understanding of the difference between the international and Kazakhstani practice. We will show how to manage this difference, how to work with it, uh, what changes we usually make in three construction contracts, and why. We will show you and uh, tell you uh, more about it. Uh, best practice in securing the contractors' obligations in Kazakhstan because when contractors participate in tendering, uh, especially foreign contractors, they know less about this and uh, we can show some more instruments that, that can, could be used and uh, proposed to the employer for example. And bank guarantees cases in local courts, we will share, share our experience and uh, local practice about it because for, for example, for Kazakhstani projects, uh, bank guarantees, uh, performance guarantee, uh, advance payment guarantee, we think that it's uh, not a good idea to use it in Kazakhstan because it's very easy to block it. And we will show on some practical cases how it was done. If you have uh, any questions, uh, if you're interested in it, uh, please send me a short note. This is my phone number and my uh, email address. Also, we are making some uh, corporate seminars. If you are planning to uh, your education, your education or uh, professional, um, uh, some educational stuff for the 2023. Please bear in mind these types of uh, seminars we usually make. Uh, make a photo if you wish and contact me with these contacts. Uh, so <clears throat> we will proceed. The second, uh, the, the following question uh, Is it true that the design and the construction cannot be the same company, uh, EPC? Uh, Goran, can you comment, please? Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so I will tell from my experience, from our experience, uh, it is not true. So the design can be delivered by the same company. Uh, however, the stamp and signature on the design uh, are probably or are uh, requested to be signed by licensed uh, company. So design in the meaning that uh, 
this design should be uh, should pass uh, national uh, state expertise expertise. Uh, the company who is delivering design must be out, uh, authentic or must be licensed in the Kazakh uh, Republic. This uh, license is uh, issued by the national uh, authorities. And in parallel, uh, some of uh, surrounding countries are also recognized with their licenses. It means Kyrgyz licenses are valid, uh, Russian licenses are valid, or were valid before. I, as, I, as I know, so far Russia doesn't have licenses anymore or something. I think uh, Armenian uh, or, or uh, uh, Belarus licenses are also valid if there are. In Uzbekistan, uh, there are no licenses for the design. Oh, I'm sorry, you mean valid in Kazakhstan? Yes, I mean, they're, they're recognized by, by authorities. They are recognized, but the procedure is the same as getting new license. Yes. <laughs> some, the some, some, some of, yes, some of CS, CSE countries licenses are recognized in Kazakhstan. But it's not the recognition in pure way as a legally, let's say. It is yes. a possibility to use the experience you have in those countries and to get a new license, you will have to get a new license anyway in Kazakhstan. But it will be easier yeah. if you have some license uh, in other countries. It's not recognition. It's not a, the, there is a, there is a, um, uh, uh, interstate agreement between the post-Soviet Union countries about the recognition of the construction license. There is, and it is enforced. Not about it's, not about construction, about design license. The same, the construction and design. The same. The same. Uh, it's 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 not. Yes, Karen, I, I put put you in. Yeah, there is an <clears throat> interest uh, interstate treaty among Eurasian unit uh, economic unit countries about recognition of their licenses. So Kazakhstani licenses are valid in Armenia. And uh, Armenians are uh, Armenian and Russian and other Eurasian countries Eurasian. licenses okay. are valid in Kazakhstan. I can comment it because I uh, need to look at it because okay, uh, Goran, can you? Uh, I stopped you. Sorry, mm -hmm. proceed. So the, the the design can be done by the contractor if it is foreign contractor with his staff and with his uh, uh, professionals. Uh, however, it must be stamped and signed by professionals who are licensed or who are recognized by Kazakh legislation to pass the procedure. This is related to the to all uh, projects or all contracts where uh, state expertise must be followed. And mainly, this is all, almost everywhere. I didn't met any contract where it was not required. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it takes time. This is this is the the, the, the procedure. What is what is time and time time demanding, not an expertise but design and expertise together. Thank you. Uh, yes, and in Kazakhstan there are only one. Uh, yes, Karen, I put you on. In Kazakhstan there are only one direct restriction about this. Uh, who can do, who can't do something uh, related with the same project. For example, the design team uh, who made the design having local licenses cannot provide engineering services for the parties. It is, if it is financed by the state uh, funding. It is uh, strictly said in, the, in one of the, uh, of the rules uh, approved by the government. There is only one restriction I, I know. Uh, there are no any other restrictions, and DPC is possible. And in Kazakhstan, there is a difference. Uh, you can, uh, not a difference, but a different approach than in other countries that you can't go to the construction site and make any construction. You can make a fence, you can make some exploration, but you can't start the construction before your design is passed the examination procedure got the uh, positive uh, reply from the uh, state expertise or private expertise. I would like to, to because it is Mr. Alfonso is giving comments in the chat. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is not mainly a question to you, Andre. Are there any proposals for the updating of the law of Kazakhstan about design and construction? 
in the meaning that same company can be end designer and uh, construction company. And from my, uh, from my experience, I can share my experience. Uh, if we had a contract where the employer put for the contractor that he is responsible for design, construction and surveying works. And same time, uh, it is as uh, I understood uh, is contradictory with the law that it cannot be the same company, but uh, the, how it can be avoided that you hire a subcontractor who is uh, with license, with adequate license right. yeah. for this. Usually he is signing, practice, yeah. he, he is signing the, the design and there is no uh, con conflicts of interest about design and construction. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Karen? Yes. Yeah, this answering about uh, design and construction to be implemented by the same company. So of course it is, it could be done. Of course, Ivan Fidik has several contracts uh, designed for this purpose when the construction and uh, design is make is made by one company. But there is a case when there is a conflict. And uh, yeah, international, Financing institutions pay too much, uh, very tight attention to this. So, if the design is prepared by a company and the employer being financed by the international financing financing institution is calling for tenders under this design, in this case, uh, the designing company, which who has already prepared the design cannot participate in that tender at all. Because uh, there is a conflict because uh, these institutions do not allow the entities participated in the preparation of the bidding documents to participate in that bid, in that tender. And the design, detailed design in this case is a part of tendering documents. It means that there is a conflict and the international from the financing institutions. So please keep this in mind. If you have tender on the red book, the company who has prepared the design would not be allowed to participate in that tender. Just think, just... Uh, thank you very much. Maybe, yes, I propose to go, go on. Uh, next question. Uh, it, it was stated in the Russian uh, major guarantees uh, for the contractor. Karen? Yeah, so there are several gar warranties, guarantees, I would say, but they, which are to be provided and the fitting books to the employer by the contractor. So, first is the performance guarantee, which is uh, ensuring that the employer, uh, I'm sorry, contractor will fulfill he, its obligations under the contract and will not leave the contract saying that, okay, I am leaving. And, the, uh, and he will perform all his obligations under the, under the contract. The performance guarantee also covers defect uh, notification period. It covers all the, uh, all the obligations to be implemented, to be uh, to taken by the uh, contractor before the employer. The other guarantee is advance payment guarantee. If uh, there is advance payment under the contract, mainly FIDIC recommends to uh, issue these advance payments and the advance payment guarantee. It is. It would be. It could be as a, as a bank guarantee or in other forms, depending on the employer's uh, understanding of uh, and depending on the fire the wishes of the employer. Let's say the other guarantee is retention money, which is taken under uh, by the employer out of the every payment or to the contractor. Mainly, it is five percent, and uh, these five percent accumulates, and this retention money accumulates at the end of the contract. And when the uh, when the commissioning certificate is issued, 
then this retention money are uh, paid back to the contractor. So these are these three main uh, warrant uh, guarantees which are uh, due from the contractor to the employer. Uh, is that that's it? Do you have anything to add, yeah. colleagues? Goran? Yes, I did. I think there is also tender guarantee or bidding guarantee when contractor is participating. Yeah, this is not from contractor. This is from the bidder. This is different. From the, ah, okay. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. yes, and yeah. now in the, in the new book there is a. A responsibility for a professional uh, responsibility warrant. So professional, professional, liability, no? yeah. professional liability, which is introduced uh, as, a, as a protection for the bad design or bad performance during the engineering works. Well, thank you. Uh, and, and also there are So they are mainly covering the contractor's risks but uh, we had cases when the employer asks for some uh, for uh, the contractor to uh, insure the employer's risks also so it could uh, be also yes. yes there are some cases but it, again it depends on the on the cost on the... okay thank you uh, let's go move on uh, next question what are the regular difficulties encountered from contractors or employers Goran? Interesting topic, interesting question. Thank you for the question. Huge, huge question. Huge. <laughs> I can talk about this full, full life. I will, I will not take so much time from you. Uh, I will have underline two main uh, challenges for the, main, for the foreign contractor. First is licenses for, licenses for the work in Kazakhstan. Uh, this is something what foreign contractors do not recognize as a, as an issue or difficulty, but uh, when time comes, uh, it is a big problem because uh, they cannot practically hand over any of the work without necessary licenses. Even they, they don't do not have right to start with works if they are not covered with licenses in the um, Republic of Kazakhstan. This is related to the national law for construction where only licensed companies have right to to construct, and the levels of the of the responsibilities are very different. If you are participating in state important the the project of this importance for the state or for the republic, the license level must be the highest, the first level. If it is the simple work, some painting of the wall in some uh, small street can be fourth license or third license. This is the leveling. Uh, Many of the employers do not recognize this as a problem because this is common common position from the from the construction law in Kazakhstan that everybody understands this, but foreign companies do not understand, especially companies who are coming from the parts of the world where such licenses are not existing. And uh, this bring difficulties. Uh, it can be resolved or uh, passed with uh, with the subcontracting works. Uh, also, the company can uh, start licensing procedure. This licensing procedure, in my uh, understanding, takes uh, not short time. It is uh, practically from three to nine months in practice. So uh, usual time is six months, let's say. Also, there is a common practice in Kazakhstan that, that companies, foreign companies are buying license by buy, buying small companies which already have licenses and uh, in this way they are uh, became uh, becoming getting these licenses as ownership of the company and the uh, price of these companies i don't know what to say but uh, it is also cost which contractor company who is coming from the countries abroad must consider as, as a cost which is not clear at the beginning of the of the bidding process. Uh, second is uh, construction law procedures. Uh, so construction law procedures, uh, it means that the uh, act of uh, hidden works, uh, measuring sheets, uh, 
uh, all different uh, acts which are required by the local inspectors. Uh, and the local inspectors are something which is uh, coming out from the Kazakhstan law. Local inspectors must be dedicated from the local market. So it is completely different from the engineer position which we have as a FIDIC contract. So local inspectors, state inspectors or, or, or local uh, uh, guys who are technical, doing technical inspection on the site are something which is not common for the, for the other countries, but here in Kazakhstan or CSE countries, it is very common. Uh, they are not recognized through the FIDIC book and uh, usually they are implemented by some acts or by some uh, demand or uh, order of employer and uh, it brings big uh, headache for the realization, especially, for example, as we noticed in the yellow book. The red feeding book is something else. The red feeding book is related to the quantities and it is practically what, what, is, uh, what is normal. But uh, in yellow feeding book, silver feeding book, EPC book, emerald book, it brings a huge headache for the, for the contractors. Uh, and uh, the employer, uh, has a problem that usually his requirements are not drafted in, in proper way. Employers' requirements are uh, mostly very poor, uh, not, not justified, not clear, or they have some drafted uh, employers' requirements full of different, uh, uh, full of different statements from different engineers picked from, from different contracts uh, in bunch of the of the 400 500 thousand pages you cannot find out what is really employer's requirement and what is some uh, booklet or some some instruction from the some produce vendor of the equipment so the the employer's requirements must be done or must be drafted in in very professional way this is the the challenge what employers have and the outcome of of these bad drafted employer's requirements is a lot of disputes and a lot of uh, misunderstandings, what is the, the goods or what is the work, what should be done well, and what, yes. Mm -hmm. we, should, we, should, we should go okay. forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Karen, do you have something to add? So as, as former foreign contractor in Kazakhstan, so I would just give, make, put my signature under whatever the Goran said already. I also would add that uh, I was very much surprised with, uh, with bureaucracy, even in the banks. So I, I, I can remember cases when we were a contractor on the fitting book and our subcontractors had problems receiving money from us because uh, the uh, banks decided to read their subcontract and they have even had comments on it and saying, hey, you have to, to change this or that closed. So you, I, I, it was very surprising for me when banks interferes into relations between the contractor and his subcontractors. And of course, we, for the banks, we did just, just signed a lot of addendums to our contract uh, subcontracts in order to satisfy the banks you know that our subcontractors to receive their money Karen, thank you uh, we need mm -hmm. to proceed a lot of questions thank you uh the next question is uh, what is the role of the engineer that is operated by epc contractor Karen. okay so goran has already said that uh, the epc contract there is no engineer so there is a employer's, uh, employer's representative. So first of all, there, yeah. and uh, the role of the employer's representative on the EPC contract is to represent the employer. Yeah, understand it. And <laughs> and uh, mainly it is uh, uh, it is very much like the engineer on the other books. It makes the representative employer's representative on the EPC contract. It also issues determination. It also 
asks for variations. It also uh, so makes uh, decisions on this or that matters. And uh, he uh, his role is almost coincides with the the role of the engineer on the other books. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that the only difference is that the uh, he acts for employer only, and he's not uh, making uh, he's not obliged to make a uh, let's say fair decision for both sides. He, he, his decision should be uh, uh, on the um, for, to to protect employer as he's the employer's representatives as Goran said so all the uh, responsibility under the EPC contract is on the contractor and the uh, engineer employer's requirement uh, employer's representative on the EPC contract is just uh, uh, receiving the deliverable deliverables just signing and that this or that part is delivered so that is the main role of the employer's require representative under the EPC contract. So hey, we go and look at us something, uh, add something. No. Uh, we have a couple of minutes uh, because of the short, this, of this question is short. There are some uh, exchanging of the messages in the chat between our listeners, <laughs> between our participants. Uh, it is in respect of the uh, applicable law uh, uh, in the FIDIC. Alcina wrote that uh, kind of final the question where should should be written. Uh, answering the question, first of all, you can apply English law in construction contract in Kazakhstan, but we do not recommend to do it. There are uh, a lot of practice when in the contract it is written that applicable law is English law but in respect of the technical issues and construction stuff or I don't remember the exact word it is Kazakhstan it, it is Kazakh law there is two different laws in one arbitration clause it's not very good but there are a lot of such cases in Kazakhstan it's uh, one part of the answer the second part of the answer uh, where to write uh, where to put the applicable laws it depends on the book you're using if it is 2017 books, then particular conditions have part A, part B. You need to look through uh, where to put it. If it is all books, then it's just the particular conditions. And where to put uh, 1.4, I don't remember, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't answer right now because if we have this question in, in advance, I would be uh, give some references. But I, I believe you, you may find it, it's, it's not a problem. Uh, it's just about the chat. Uh, what the, the, one point uh, four. One point four. It's in red book, yeah. It's in for, red book. For red book. Uh, for which year? Ninety nine. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, but there is a particular condition, part A, part B. No. So you you mean what? So in what I, part I, should be? Done? I mean uh, yes, because in twenty seventeen there are different approach for the particular condition. Okay, uh, I think. Uh, it, it is enough for the listeners that we have said about it. We need to go ahead because we answered only on the half of questions, but there are, there, there are more. Uh, okay, 10th question I excluded, decided to exclude not to answer. 11th question. It's the, <clears throat> it's in Russian, but uh, it is said that what is the difference between EPC and EPCM? Uh, which of them uh, are applicable in Kazakhstan and why? There is question. I excluded it uh, because it's not clear for, for us to, to answer. I decided to exclude it. Uh, that is why I started from the 11th. Pro uh, proceed with the 11th, sorry. Uh, about the EPC and the EPCM. It is applicable in Kazakhstan, both uh, EPC and EPCM. It is possible under local laws. It is not restricted and so on and so on. Uh, when EPC contracts are most often used, used, the employer is not the builder, is not the contractor, uh, or it's not his business. He do not, he do not want to, to build. Uh, employer do not have its own service capable to manage the construction. Uh, employer do not, uh, does not want to, does not wish to in, interfere 
uh, with the uh, management on the site and B, uh, the corresponding, corresponding risks with it. Uh, and uh, at the request of the international development banks, usually PC. PCM contracts are most often used when there are uh, less complex uh, repeatable works, but with a large amount of work. When the employer is willing to take the risk of lower prices, but also correspondingly less responsibility of bigger amount of contractors, subcontractors, fragmentation, but at the same time wants to get quality construction management. That is why EPCM uh, suppose that uh, employer hires good management team uh, inside itself or uh, like an engineer, let's say. But again, it's um, it's not the it's not the law. It's just a practice. Uh, do you have something to it, Goran, Karen? No. Okay. A quite easy question. Let's go uh, for the next 12 question. Yes, it's mine again. Uh, liquidated damages uh, via spin Uh Truly to say, if we will start to discuss it in pure legal field, uh, it will be not enough for even two, three hours. I do not want to spend time uh, on some academical researches here. Uh, in the outcome, uh, in the summary, because uh, for pr practical use, let's say, penalty is always cut down by courts or even by the arbitrators. Doesn't matter which court or which arbitration. Liquidated damages would be supported by any arbitration institution. Local courts in Kazakhstan won't accept it because there is no such institution liquidated damages. But any international court, uh, not international, sorry, foreign court will accept it, usually accept it. And uh, usually they will uh, they will look at the liquidated damages, arbitrators more understandable and won't cut it. It's just a small summary um, without going deep in the academic discussions. Uh, Karen, do you have something to add? No. Goran? Okay, well, let's go on. Uh, next question. Are minutes of site meetings considered by the courts to be adequate notice of delay required by extension of time clauses? Goran? So, minutes of meeting, uh, what I understand from the question, so it is not clear what is the question about. Are the minutes of, meet, of site meetings considered by the courts to be adequate notices of delay, notices of delay to whom? Required by extension of time clauses. So is it a notice of claim by the contractor or notice of claim by the employer to the contractor? There are, this can be misunderstood. Uh, in any case, in both cases, let's say, uh, and it is claim procedure from the from the FIDIC books, it is clearly defined and stated that letter of notice must be delivered as a letter. It is not act of uh, minutes of meeting. It's not act of some memorandum. So this must be letter of notice named with notice or, or clearly stated that it is notice of, of claim for the clause 8.4 or 8.5 as a red book or yellow feeding book 1999 are providing. So the contract administration must be followed in this way by the contractor. The same is about the employer. The letter must be delivered. Minutes of meetings uh, from my perspective and from my practice are just uh, evidence uh, that uh, somebody informed some, some another party in a nice uh, professional way but not as a official document which can be used for further on on arbitration. Uh, I don't know about Kazakh law because uh, Kazakhstan uh, uh, laws or, or courts maybe they have another uh, experience. I, I, will, another I, I will wait. Like, understanding, I will wait. but for, for in, from international practice, it is uh, usually not recognized as a notice. It is easily, uh, it can be uh, not easily uh, how to say in, in, in lawyer practice uh, drawn out so it is not not used for for uh, not useful for the court procedure 
as, as a lawyer, I'm at at Dan Karen. Uh, there are, it depends. <laughs> Lawyers not always telling that. It depends. First of all, what is written in these uh, minutes of, of, of meeting? Second, were there any notices not accepted by the employer? Because there could be some notices, but they don't accept it. It's another approach. Maybe there are several minutes of meetings where it is stated in different ways, in different uh, approaches. In arbitration, it should be just uh, provided for the arbitrator, uh, for the arbitrators in proper way, if there is a way to provide it in proper and to show that there was uh, a notice, but it was done uh, with some not proper way, maybe, or was, uh, let's say, uh, problematic to provide this notice to the employer, let's say. Karen? So the third opinion. <laughs> so for uh, I, I agree with Goran for the notice uh, of claim. So there is clearly stated in the contract that the notice of claim should be in the notice of claim should be stated that this is notice of claim under this clause of the contract. If uh, if not, then it shall not be considered as notice of claim. But there are also other notices under the contract. They could be. They are so, so many, and for these other other notices, I guess it could be considered as a notice. Let's say this is a notice of, uh, who says dissatisfaction, or I don't know, or notice of, uh, notice of, uh, force majeure, of notice of, changing law. It which could be different things, and this uh, for this type of uh, notices. When they add a, a party informs the other party, notice uh, minutes of meeting could be. Uh, if I was a card uh, uh, arbitrator, I would take this as a proper notice, but only if it is not notice of claim, because for the notice of claim, it is clearly it's said strictly written in the contract should be this should be, should be this wording. said that this is notice of claim under this clause. So for me, being as a, being as an arbitrator. I would take minutes of meetings signed by both parties. Just please remember that also, that it means that the other party has signed these minutes of meeting and is informed uh, on what is written in these uh, minutes of meeting. And it could be a proper notice for other cases, not for the notice of claim. Thank you, colleagues. Good. Uh, the next question. Manufacturer defect, defect liability under three contracts. Karen? Manufacturer defect liability. So I would say that there is no defect liability for manufacturer. Manufacturer is not a party for the contract. Manufacturer is, is just a supplier for, the, for your contractor. And, and guarantees contract should be provided by the contractor. That's right. Yeah. And uh, the contractor is responsible before the employer even for manufacturer's default if the uh, manufacturer the, the answers for his obligations before the contractor contractors is uh, answers before the employer so no manufacturer's liability and the FIDIC contract manufacturer is not party for the FIDIC contract so uh, if the employer would like to have some additional uh, warranties from the uh, for, from the man manufacturer, the, then the employer should uh, state this into the contract with the contractor, and the contractor is responsible for providing these guarantees. But FIDIC contract says nothing about manufacturer's defect, li uh, the defect liability. Thank you. Next question. Uh, maybe Goran, you have, you have something to add? I fully agree with Karen. Okay. 15. Uh, any successful cases for foreign contractor in the claim to local client? Uh, Goran? So we have. Hello, do you hear yes? Yes, we can continue. From our experience, we have. Um, 
normal, not successful. It is, it is cases of, of the claims are the regular FIDIC procedures and the claims under the FIDIC are not something which is stressful or something that people should consider like success or not, or not success. It is a regular procedure to request your rights which are belonging to you under the contract because contract is signed between parties on equal rights. And uh, whenever contractors uh, face the delays or uh, costs which are not provided uh, under the original scope of the works, then he is entitled for the, for the claim. And then we are coming to the success. If contractor has full evidences and if can, it can be supported, it can, if it can be substantiated, and if it can be proved to the engineer or to the party who is administrating the contract, we can talk about a, a positive reply to, to contractor's claim. And we, from our experience, we have positive replies and we have uh, claims which are which passed procedure and we got extensions of time, we got uh, additional money in our uh, claims whenever we get provided normal substantiated claim to the engineer. Of course, uh, there, is also there are also disputes and the not satisfaction of the parties. And this should be addressed to the dispute board or to the arbitration later on. So unfortunately, yes, there are disputes which are uh, going to, to the arbitration or to the dispute boards. And uh, I do not have experience with, um, with such procedures in Kazakhstan, but in surrounding countries, yes, we have, uh, let's say success on winning process on the arbitrations with, uh, against other clients. Thank you. Thank you. I will add uh, just uh, several things. Uh, truly depends very much on the contractor. If contractor can work with the FIDIC, know his rights, obligations, and have experience, he can provide claim without any problem. But there are several dozen of contractors locally in Kazakhstan, local contractors who are signing FIDIC contracts and do not know what to do with it. Then there is a problem. Then there is a huge misunderstanding with the word claim, because when you translate it to the Russian language, it is pretensia, and uh, pretensia means that it is like a, a lawsuit. Different understanding of the wordings, and it immediately becomes a problem for parties. They misunderstood the conception of claim, unfortunately. And yes, the decision for it, uh, uh, if it is done in proper way, uh, proper time, in, uh, proper uh, background documentation, so on, so on, is the DEB. That's right. Uh, DEB in Kazakhstan is uh, is workable. It, it's possible. It is allowable. Uh, there is no any restrictions under under Kazakhstan law for DEB, and they uh, usually three, four times per year on different conferences here in Kazakhstan, promoting this DEB because it's a great uh, vehicle which uh, helps to resolve a lot of problems. Uh, but the practice uh, are not so good, let's say, unfortunately. Usually employers excluding DEB just because of the one huge uh, problem. Uh, none of the banks want to finance it. Non-EBRD, ADB, they do not want to put in the law in this amount. Yes, go ahead. I should disagree about this with you because uh, banks usually, from my practice and from practice of the contracts where I participated, and it comes to be more than five contracts up to now where bank openly accepted costs for the DEB. It is not about the bank doesn't want the cost for the DEB, it is about that employer must follow uh, national regulative or national uh, legislation to ask higher authorities for approval of the costs. And uh, in many cases, the higher authorities are not accepting such costs. They are saying go to the court directly. Don't, don't spend money for the, let's say, DAB. What is this? This is an interim decision which is not obliged for, for any party. Like, you have DAB decision, but you have not uh, reason to follow this decision. So go for the court. Thank you. Um, 
I will divide this answer on two parts. On the first part that banks are ready to finance, I didn't know about it. It's good, it's great if it is so. Uh, but the second part usually happens not during the signing the contract. It happens only after reason of the dispute. Because during signing of the contract, when we raise this question about GEB, uh, there is no clean, uh, clear answer from the upper body. There is no understanding how much it will cost. There is no understanding well, what's this, what does it need for. There is only understanding to make the project, the costs cheaper for whole project to make it cheaper. And that's all. This is the problem. Okay, uh, we should proceed. Uh, uh, 16. Question is how to deal with taking, taking over certificate and hand over by the employer? Can uh, they be issued simultaneously or not? Would like to hear speaker's opinion on the irregularity, irregularities as well. Um, actually, uh, speaker saw the question. It was a huge one. It was two pages question. <laughs> I shortened it <laughs> because uh, the format does not allow us to show it this question in full and uh, in order to open all aspects because the question is quite huge. Uh, I will try to do some outcomes. Um, uh, the taking over process, the commissioning process is different from what we have in laws and what we have in credit. It's just, we need to adopt it, um, very much adopt it. Uh, but again, no need to rewrite all clauses. Truly, there are only three, four changes to comply with the laws and to change the credit contract. Um, can they be signed simultaneously? Yes, they can. The problem is that under Kazakh law, both these certificates does not mean anything. Under Kazakh law, uh, the legality have only two documents in construction. Acceptance Act, Construction Acceptance Act, and the uh, Commissioning Act, which have the uh, which has the forms established by laws, which can be uh, fulfilled in uh, in accordance with the legislation, and so on, so on, so on. You can put this taking over, handover, uh, this both civil final certificate in any place you need, depending on the technology of the commissioning, depending on the uh, employer requirements, what have you put in the commissioning, what won't you get in the in the end as the outcome. Because for the red book, it is one way. For the yellow book, it's a different way. For the silver book, silver book it's third way. It's three different ways where to put this commissioning. And it all depends on the uh, technological process of the commissioning and need to bear in mind that in Kazakhstan under Kazakh law, uh, it is strictly prohibited to uh, to make the commercial activity of the project, let's say, to sell the goods, the production results from the facility until uh, it is commissioned. You mean you need to first commission it, then you can sell goods uh, produced by this facility. You can't make any commercial activity until commissioning is finalized under Kazakh law. There is only two or three, uh, uh, let's say, ex extractions from this rule, but uh, they are rarely used. Usually these, these are the frames, the first two frames, and the third frame is the uh, defects notification period, which is not possible as it is stated in FIDIC under Kazakh law. With the another stuff, for example, uh, with a, 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 another problem, uh, because of when you sign the Commissioning Act, Commissioning Act under Kazakh law, uh, you can't uh, ask to eliminate all defects. You can ask to eliminate only hidden defects. This is the core difference uh, using the taking over and the final certificate in FIDIC and defect notification period. Sometimes we are converting this defects notification period to guarantee period. But again, uh, guarantee period won't allow uh, everything what, what, what is stated under FIDIC rules, unfortunately. Uh, it depends on the project a lot. Uh, 
maybe you can you, you want to add something goran karen Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, the participant who wrote this question, uh, the the whole analysis was done. I would agree with everything you have stated in this analysis. It's good, and it is what we understand and one what we work with for sure. Uh, okay, okay. Seventeen question. Ah, it's directly to Artushenko. <laughs> Is there any dispute resolution arbitration case in which Artushenko witnesses and or participated in Kazakhstan according to ICC or UNCITRAL rules? Uh, the subject of dispute arbitration, how was the case resulted in favor, favor of which party? In our practice, we had only a couple of cases with ICC. Uh, one was the construction case. The second was the <clears throat> corporate law case. Corporate law case, we participated as a witness expert. It was providing memos, providing explanations, but without any cross-examination or without any participating participation in court. The second case was the construction case uh, under UNCITRAL rules. It was a huge case for 300 or 400 million USD uh, started as a huge. It was three, four months only case because finally they uh, mitigated it and mediated it and closed it. They just uh, exchanged with the several arbitration requests, uh, answers. We supported the employer, local employer, local state company, uh, jointly with uh, some international law firms. Um, yeah. Uh, in favor of uh, how it was finalized, it was agreed like uh, like uh, I haven't seen the final document, unfortunately. I just know it was uh, mediated. Uh, they agreed on some terms uh, jointly, uh, and finally it was closed. Yeah, this is what we have uh, before with the ICC. Uh, Karen, maybe you had something with the ICC? No, no. I, I have no experience. In have you any experience with the ICC? Yes, but not from Kazakhstan. No, okay. okay. I see. Uh, we have the final set of questions. We have 15, 12, not 15, 12 minutes. Uh, it's four questions we've got for the last only two days. That is why we haven't discussed it and haven't decided who will answer on what. I will try to start, but colleagues will help me. Um, Please give guidelines to me about how to become lawyer in construction disputes. And also, I want to know how to draft PD co uh, contracts in the real life. Uh, yeah, it was from one of the students, I believe, from uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, uh, what can I advise for the lawyer? Uh, just to find a place to work in the construction field. Uh, until you have any practice, it is useless to read, to make some, uh, it depends on the way you want to develop and become construction lawyer, because there are some construction lawyers, uh, like, um, sorry, forget this word, this word, uh, academic construction lawyers. It's one approach. Uh, construction lawyers in practice is different approach. You need to find some places to work uh, with your hands, to visit these construction sites, to provide, uh, to make draft of letters, to see the contract. Until you find this, it is useless. And of course, it is specialization. If you have uh, something in mind, if you want to specialize in construction, just read a lot of different uh, articles, of course. Uh, they should be interesting for you. But without any practice, it is which is just maybe a waste of time, but uh, depends, of course, on different things. But uh, I had in mind uh, to make some uh, like a questionnaire lists for the post students to understand uh, for them uh, where to start from. It's a long question, but uh, maybe I will do it some, 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 uh, somehow, somewhere. Uh, yes, Karen. Ask this question. So, FIDIC has several programs for uh, teaching the different aspects of FIDIC contracts. 
but for uh, being uh, being able to participate in those courses, you should have some practice. Then you uh, first you have to have practice. Then you should have uh, passed those through these PD courses. Then you also should have practice. Then you should have exam. So <laughs> it's it is just continuing and non-ending. Uh, never ending story, never ending story, and start from the English language first. Yeah. Get to know without English language, it's impossible. So first, so first is English, second is practice, then the other the parts will just uh, you will find yeah. on your way. Yeah, uh, also, we have some courses uh, by our law firm. I will put the link to the course we are making right now in Almaty. Uh, but it's it's in the, it can be done in the in distance of course uh, it can be done in distance uh, yes I put it here yes it's in Russian okay. uh, yeah now it is in the chat uh, you can go through these courses as well uh, what next um, what are the risk for client in turnkey contract if we use Pedic Silver Book for client. Uh, I, I assume it's for the employer. What are the risks, colleagues? Goran? Shortly, briefly. The same, the same as for in every con construction contract, I would say. So the risk, the main risk is that the contractor will not work properly. So, and the contract should be would be terminated and the employer will remain with unfinished construction this is the main risk but this risk is partially covered by performance security and the by risk, proper by proper uh, negotiations and discussions and preparations in the beginning yeah it is uh, no we, we speak about signed contract okay the preparing uh, contract is the pre, uh, preparing proper contract is for every contract, not only EPC, not turnkey uh, project. So this is the they are the same as in all or uh, other uh, construction contracts. They uh, probably they uh, the person who has this question he meant. The distribution of the main risks are distributed in the EPC turnkey contract to them uh, to the contractor. Contractor bears the risk of uh, geodesical works, uh, site conditions. What else? Uh, everything. Everything. The risk All risks for of the contractor almost first major is somehow divided. Sorry, I, uh, I I thought that all risks, almost almost all risks, are bared by the contractor in silver. Yeah, but but there are some risks that that are distributed between the parties. Let's say, yes, for, of course. for the example, portion. force major risks are somehow more or less uh, fairly are divided between them. What else? The ch risks for changing prices could be somehow touched in particular conditions and also uh, somehow divided or uh, put on the employer so it's uh, the but the main construction risks for are are on the uh, on the contractor mm -hmm. the epc con on the turnkey projects okay uh goran do you have something to add yes as you told already just to, to say the same very limited risks are on the employer side mainly about uh, these uh, wars, uh, hostiles, and uh, such things like uh, earthquakes, uh, flooding, or something which is not, not possible to, to be predicted in advance. Of course, in Silver Book, uh, the underground conditions are on the side of the contractor. So this is the big difference between Yellow Fiddick Book and Silver Fiddick Book. And, uh, underground conditions are not the subject where a contractor can claim the risks against the employer or against the client. That's all. Thank you. Uh, the next question. How can we obtain the official PIDIC in Russian language 
it should be produced by via Moscow office. Uh, I will answer. Uh, first of all, there is no official translation to Russian language of all new books. There are only one translation of the Fidic Red Book 1999. You may find it uh, fidic.org, but be aware that this translation is not legally, it's not by lawyers. It was done by translators. You will need to finalize the trans this translation anyway, because it's impossible to use it the way you will download it. It's the first. The second part, yes, you can find uh, the Russian language. Uh, uh, you may find several new books on the Russian language, uh, 2017 year, uh, let's say around four or five books. It's yellow, silver, it's underground works, um, something else I don't remember. You may find uh, via uh, Naix, Naix it, it's in Russian, in English, it's N-A-C-E-C dot -E rule. But okay, it's anyway, you will find on uh, via fedic.org. Uh, this translation is uh, is better, but not ideal. Yes, Karen, we worked with the 2017 book, uh, Yellow Book, recently. There are something need to be finalized. There is no ideal translation. Unfortunately, you will need to finalize it. Anyway, uh, and you can buy it uh, via website, yes, from Moscow. The differences between a yellow and silver book. Uh, I would give you one minute, colleagues. Who can? Can I, Andrei? Yeah. Yeah. Just to interfere, the reply for the question about FIDIC books. So oh, yeah. uh, there is a bookshop uh, on the FIDIC website. Uh, all editions are available to be both by uh, in electronical way and there are official Russian translations as well. So, so for 1999 only? For 1999 no, no, no. Only. For 2017, for it is, it is become official? Yes, yes. It is official website and official download can be uh, took, taken from the from the official website. But the and the whole difference... Still, 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 still. So uh, I, po I posted the, the, the link about the differences about differences between silver and yellow book. The yellow book, the, the main difference is, let's say, uh, yellow book in, in, involves or introduces engineer as a contract administrator. Silver book doesn't have engineer as a contract administrator. The yellow book uh, is uh, requiring less in, okay less into the risk allocation is balanced in yellow book in silver book the risk allocation is uh, mostly on the side of the contractor so those are two main thank you uh, Karen do you want to say uh, that? Yeah, I would say that the main difference is is I uh, from the employer's point of view that uh, the yellow book uh, uh, both yellow book and silver book they are based on employer's requirements not detailed design but uh, yellow book is for those type of objects which are simple and which are not going to be used for producing something silver book is mainly for producing uh, object which would produce with which which is production means and the um, uh, in silver book the construction uh, uh, is part is very small there is mainly procurement of equipment installing in the, the equipment and commissioning this equipment the construction goes it is uh, like auxiliary to this uh, to these works so let's imagine we are trying to uh, construct a power plant. Construction, construction of building around these turbines is very small part of the work, but the main part is having those turbines, but those turbines having some several capacity and those production having some uh, defined uh, by the cost, the cost not excluding, uh, exceeding such a, some amount. So these are the main from the differences from the point of view of the employer. 
from the point of view of the object which is going to be constructed. Okay, uh, thank you. I think this is it for the, with the questions. Once more, uh, a short reminder for this seminar, offline seminar in Almaty. Mm -hmm. Who is interested in it can make a photos. Also, we will appreciate if you will write your feedback on this webinar via our chat. Uh, we will try to organize such English law uh, with the English, uh, using English uh, language webinars next year, maybe more, more often. Um, hope uh, there will be an interest, but we will we'll appreciate your feedback. Uh, what is good, what was bad? Uh, please give us your feedback and uh, we will try to uh, do it better and maybe more often. Goran, Karen, thank you very much for your participation, for your involvement and the answers. Uh, it is always a pleasure to see you uh, and to speak, to discuss. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm uh, staying for three, four minutes to wait for some feedback and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.